Good day, everyone. I'm thrilled to welcome each and every one of you to Velodyne LIDAR's Disruptive Women Powering Our Autonomous Future Conference. Today, we will hear from many dynamic women in the industry and gain perspective on not only where they have been, but where they are going. I'm pleased to first bring to you Sally Frickman, the Chief Marketing Officer at Velodyne LIDAR. Sally has a bachelor's degree from UC Santa Barbara, a master's from San Francisco State University, and teaching credentials from California State University. Sally has been with Velodyne for three and a half years and currently oversees marketing, communications, business development, and public policy. Sally, we are so pleased to have you open us up with your remarks. Thank you, Professor Talbot. As for Pro Professor Talbot said, I am Sally Frickman and I'm honored to be able to say a few words ahead of this incredible and important event that we have planned for you. I will start with a little more about my background. I began my career as a social worker, working with adults with disabilities, and then became a teacher educating students with learning differences. I grew into an administrative role, working first as a vice principal and then a principal. And now here I am working in the LIDAR and autonomous vehicle industry. Throughout my career and my life, I've been working with and interacting with people aged four through 90 from a vast variety of backgrounds. Doing so has enabled me to more deeply understand the importance of diversity and different perspectives. In planning this event, Professor Talbot reminded me that diversity is good for everyone. It is so true and this truth has stuck with me. Diversity is good for everyone. It is good for innovation, for education, for creativity and to advance every aspect of our industry. We have the space for diversity right now and we need to actively fill this space. Velodyne LIDAR came up with the idea of the Disruptive Women Powering Our Autonomous Future Summit while planning another event that we do each year as a part of our commitment to safety, the World Safety Summit. It just so happened that one of the panels from our virtual 2020 event was all women and we were so excited about it. After a short period of reflection, we realized that this should not be unique. It should be normal. It should not be a stretch that our leaders in the autonomous vehicle and emerging technology industry, those speaking at events and in the public sphere are women, people of color, and those who identify as a gender beyond those of traditional binary gender categories. And so I am thankful to be holding this event to showcase female powerhouses discussing the technology that is changing the future as we speak and who are inspiring and motivating people of all ages to be a part of this amazing industry. I want to thank Velodyne for their support and encouragement in holding this event. Pamela Gauchi, our events and marketing director, who has done so much to make this happen, and all of our remarkable speakers, and of course, our audience. I will echo the sentiment that you will hear from many today. I have a 10-month-old daughter, and I want her to be fierce, strong, and engaged in disruptive spaces. Together, we will move in the right direction. And back to you, Professor Talbot. Thank you so much for those remarks, Sally. I'm so pleased to be able to address you all today. When I was given the phenomenal opportunity to host this event, I thought, what should I speak about? How can I lend my voice in a meaningful way to this conversation? So I decided to do what I do best, which is to advocate and to educate. My background includes having practiced as a litigator for 18 years, then serving as the deputy administrator for the Motor Vehicle Commission for the state of New Jersey, and then as the senior advisor to the administrator of the Department of Transportation's Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Whew, that's a mouthful. And now I'm a professor at American University, as well as having started my own consulting company, fulfilling my life's passion. I teach and lecture on autonomous and electric vehicles. And as a policy instructor, I remind students and the industry that transportation is mobility and mobility is freedom. 
And that is exactly what I believe an autonomous future will offer us. I will tell you as a first generation American, I grew up with the understanding that if I got a good education, I would be able to do or be anything. But what I've come to learn in my life's work is that without transportation, it's hard to realize the dreams that we would want our education to take us to. So here we are today at the Disruptive Women Powering Our Autonomous Future Conference. That's another mouthful. But what really sits with me is this understanding of what the word disruptive means. The dictionary says the word disruptive means innovative and groundbreaking. So how do we move forward with equity in transportation and in STEM technology areas? How do we empower not just the ones who are already doing it, but the ones who are on the cusp of doing it to be as disruptive as possible? Companies such as Velodyne LiDAR go a long way in their actions towards acknowledging and addressing equity. That includes not just having women in the C-suite and in the boardroom, but hiring, developing, and promoting them as well. This should be held up as a shining example. The opportunities exist out there for many other companies to join them. 27% of STEM classes right now are comprised of women. We have numbers of historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, with heavy tech and STEM focused programs. The work that we do today is in preparation for the autonomous vehicle of the future. And the same goes when we prepare our citizenry, those in the community, our sisters, our daughters, and our grandchildren. In many instances, we are opening up the door and allowing them to have the opportunity of a bright future with mobility and freedom. I look forward to the representatives in each one of these panels and fireside chats today. They come from a cross section of America with strong educational backgrounds and commitments to community and service. And they are like me, passionate about what the future of autonomous vehicle holds. And how appropriate that I've been given this platform during Women's History Month. SAE says that no matter the industry, diversity matters. And so here we have a phenomenal occasion to be heard. And so do the countless number of women in STEM. 50% of the people in the world are women. When we are engineering and designing for half the world, should not women be part of that team? Should they have something to say and their voice be included in the effort? We do have something to say our ingenuity to lend and the drive to innovate, and we are ready and available to do so. And you don't have to look far. The women who are participants in this conference are innovating and disrupting each and every day. Also, we have a pipeline of qualified, enthusiastic, dedicated students. If you are in a position to hire and develop and promote, just look right in front of you at the abundance of capable women who are ready to enter the field or in the field and trying to move up. March is Women's History Month, time to honor all the many contributions that women have made in our society. It's been over 30 years since this celebration was formally established. And in truth, we need more than one month to honor all of our contributions. Today is an opportunity to share just a snippet of the many influences and roles that women are currently playing in the field of engineering, science, technology, and automation. We've already had the first woman in outer space, the first woman to win an Indy car series, the first woman CEO of an OEM, and the first woman leading an autonomous vehicle company. We wanna honor the work that they've done in the STEM fields and we know that it doesn't end with those first that I just mentioned, or even the dynamic women on these panels. One of the things that we can all learn from these firsts is that women need, deserve, and have earned a seat at the table. We're blessed that engineering schools are now 20% women, and that we have existing pipelines of women of color in schools like North Carolina A&T, which graduates the most Black engineers in the United States every single year. We do know that the more diverse a workforce, the better the work product. 
women will continue to empower the future of autonomy and can and should be at every level of the companies that are working in this field. From the engineering space to the policy positions, from the line worker to the C-suite and the boardroom, I'm pleased to ask you to participate in this journey as we speak to the women who are not only empowering, but are also inspiring us in this unique space. Women throughout history have been the vessels in which the notions of freedom and the pursuit of dreams have been carried. Let us meet the women who are creating freedom in this disruptive technology.